Hello, and welcome to Section 4, which deals with creating and managing users in our application. In this section, we'll take a look at the user model that E2 provides us with the basic application template. However, you'll probably notice right away that you need more from a user component, so you'll want to know how to extend it and make it more secure, and that's precisely what we'll do in our second video. Then, we'll learn how to register new users. After we've gotten our user logged in, we'll need to have a way to tell our application what pages they can and can't access. For that, we'll learn about the Access Control Filter, or ACF for short. Eventually, though, you'll find that you need more fine-grained control over access to your application's features, and for that we'll turn to Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC as it's also known. So without further delay, let's move on to the first video of this section. The title is a bit misleading, because Yi has actually done all of the hard work of creating a default user object for us when we installed the basic application template. We'll take a closer look at the user model and try to understand how it works. Then, we'll take a look at the identity interface, which any user class needs to implement in order to allow Yi to authenticate it. Finally, we will look at the login form class, which is also provided with the basic application template and is the link between our romantic hopefuls and their user accounts. Let's jump right in and open up the user model that Yi provided us when we installed the basic application template in the first section of our course. It's located in the models directory. Right off the bat, you'll see that the user model extends from Yi's object class rather than its active record class. This is because by default, the user class doesn't use a database to store any data. Rather, the application's user data is stored in the user's property of the user class. The keys in each array correspond to the public properties of the class. Moving right along, we see a series of public methods. Nearly all of these methods is required by the identity interface, which the user class implements. Each user needs an ID so that Yi can tell it apart from the other users of your application. The findIdentity method simply returns a user object that matches a provided ID. We'll skip the methods pertaining to access tokens for the moment as these are only used in a stateless RESTful application, which is beyond the scope of this course. GetID simply returns the value of whatever property identifies our user. In this case, it's simply ID, but you could call it whatever you like, as long as you return its value from this method. There are two additional methods in this object, find by username and validate password. These are methods that allow you to implement logging in with a username and password combination. We'll see more about those in a moment when we look at the login form. And that's just what we're going to do. The login form class is also located in the models directory. Try to follow along as we see what's going on here. First, we see a series of validation rules. The one that looks odd is the validate password method. This is a custom validation, and it runs a method in this class that shares its name. Looking at this method, we see that it calls another method called getUser which calls the user class's findByUserName method. Switching back to the user class for a second, we see that findByUserName simply loops through the user's array looking for a matching username, and if one is found, it returns an object with the user data loaded. Then, it simply runs the user's validate password method with the provided password, which does a simple string comparison to see if the correct password was provided. If we open the site controller and look at its action login method, we'll see that the login form class has provided post data from our HTML login form using the load method. Then the controller calls login forms login method, which runs all of the validations, including validate password. If everything goes according to plan, it calls the user application components login method. The user component is part of the base framework code, and the login method registers the user is logged in. It's a lot to follow, and it seems a bit complicated, but it allows for an amazing amount of flexibility, which we will see in the next video. In the meantime, let's see this all in action. Open up site login in your browser. First, let's try an invalid username password. You'll see that the error message from the login forms validate password method is displayed for us as expected. Now, if we use the combination admin admin, which is in the users array of our user class, we'll see from the menu bar that our user was logged in successfully. 
So now, you understand the basics of the user model that is provided with the basic application template and how it can be used to authenticate your application's users. Chances are, though, that you'll want to store additional information with your users, which will require a database. And you'll also probably want to beef up security some, so we'll learn how to do both in the next video.